Hey there, and welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor Josh, and I am so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, paper, your phone, however you want to take notes, and get ready for today's message. Let's jump right in. We have been in a series talking about the armor of God. I've really been enjoying it. But before we begin that, I want to thank everybody who made last week so successful, our college launch. Amen. It's been a 10-year project, us getting this college up and running the way that we wanted to do it. And uh, the vendors in the, in the gym and the day, it was just, it was a brilliant, it was a perfect day. Thank you so much for everyone who's involved. We're in a series called The Armor of God. Last week we talked about the shield of faith. If you have missed any of this series, go to familychurchny.com, click on sermons, go down to the series Armor of God, and binge watch it. You binge watch Netflix, binge watch some Word. They're 30 minute sermons. You can watch them all in just a couple hours, you can get the whole series in. But today we're going to do part two of The Shield of Faith. Last week we brought it up, Ephesians 6.16. Paul says to us, above all, taking the shield of faith. Above all does not mean more important than or above all things. It means out in front of. Covering all of the armor, out in front is the shield of faith wherewith you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. I want to look at this phrase here, taking up the shield of faith. They're taking the shield of faith. The word taking is from the Greek word ana, all right, I'm going to mess this one up, analampano, all right? And it's a compound word made of two, two words, ana, meaning up or back or again, and the word lambano means to take up or to take in hand. So really this compound word, what it's trying to say to us is to take something up in the hand or pick something up again. I want to ask, have you ever been tempted to lay your faith down? Has there ever been a season of you like, yeah, we're going to get into the business today. We're going to get some the business, all right? Like, have you ever gone through a season of your life where you've laid your faith down? Can I be transparent about a couple things? So um, I'm not very political, but I watch politics. I vote. And through this last election, I'm part of what's called the evangelical world, the pastoral world, and, and, I, and I'm from the Pentecostal world, so I believe in signs and wonders and miracles and prophecies and apostles and all that kind of stuff. And, and I had a problem that not a single evangelical prophet was prophesying that President Biden was going to win. Every single one of them was prophesying. God said, Donald Trump for president again. And, and not that I'm so much super spiritual, but I was like, man, I'm not feeling that same thing. Where's anybody like, so, so, so really I'm like, so a lot of these guys are getting up and saying that God said, but I think a lot of it was their own bias. And if they were to say something blue instead of red, they might lose their support base. Oh. And I lost faith. I lost faith with the office of the prophet in this generation. That they would sell out a word for a donation. And there's a part of me that wanted to lay down my shield. Maybe, maybe you've suffered an illness in your body and you've laid down faith. Maybe something happened relationally. Someone hurt you. And your faith in humanity, your faith in others, you kind of laid it down. And this is what it's saying here. He's saying, above all, pick back up your faith. Pick back up faith. And I'm going to be honest, guys, there's going to be seasons of life. There's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be times like, you got this women's conference coming up, ladies. This women's conference is going to be so super stinking awesome. And you're going to have a moment with God. And you're going to be like on the spiritual mountaintop. But you're going to have to come back down because your boy wasn't there. 
Your boy wasn't at the mountaintop. So you're going to come home. Oh, my God. Everything in this household's going to change today. You're going to get right with Jesus. And he's going to be like, yo, honey, slow your roll. I don't even know what you're talking about. I didn't hear Pastor Chris sing. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> nah. Do you get what I'm saying, guys? There's going to be these ups and downs. There's going to be these mountaintop experiences. And there's going to be these lows where we're like, I don't even know if I have faith. I'm trying to be for real with somebody today. This is why Paul's saying, take up the shield of faith. He's telling us that if we can take it up, then we can also put it down. That's a bad position to be in. To be in a battle without a shield. I mean, even our police officers know to put on their uh, vest, bulletproof vest, right? And if they're really going to get into it, they're going to get that riot gear out. They're going to go get that riot shield that got that stun gun on the front, or if they don't, they should. Some Tony Stark's joint on that. <laughs> I'm just asking, maybe if you have laid your shield down in some season of your life, you've gotten discouraged. Maybe you've stopped believing that God is at work in your life. I'm going to tell you this. Paul is reminding us it's not too late to pick it back up. And forgive me if you didn't like my political statement. It was not a political statement. I'm just telling you how I felt as another evangelical who tries to hear from God. There are times, and can, can we, I mean, maybe I'm the only one, but I felt like heaven was strangely silent the last two years. There's a whole lot of prayer going on. And a lot of people not hearing what they think they should have heard. That doesn't mean that this thing don't work. It don't mean it's broken. It just maybe we're hearing wrong. Maybe we're expecting different things. He says, take up the shield of faith. It's not too late to take it up. No well-trained Roman soldier would go into battle without a shield. That piece of weaponry was not optional. Maybe you could not take your knife with you, but you had to take your shield with you or else there was nothing between you and the enemy. There was nothing between you and a fiery dart. And if you think your reflexes are that good, that you're going to avoid every arrow, no, you're going to get stuck. You're going to get stuck. Something's going to get your attention. And without this protective shield out in front of them, there was absolutely nothing between them and their opponent. And the soldier understood that he would be walking into self-imposed destruction if he left his shield behind. And I, I just wonder if maybe there's some things happening in your life or have happened in your life that were self-imposed because you put your faith down. Do you know why many of us lay our faith down? Is to pick something else up that we shouldn't be carrying. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even preaching to you today. I'm talking about me. Huh? Maybe we put our faith down to pick something else up. And maybe the thing that we picked up is the thing that's causing the anxiety and the worry and the stress now. And I'm not even talking about sin. All right, I'll be transparent. I'll tell you what happened to me. Can I tell you what happened to me? I'll tell myself why I'm in this series the way that I am. During COVID, I kind of panicked a little bit, right? Everybody stopped coming to church. Like the business that I had built my entire life was just kind of like straight up over. And unless you did online church, you had nothing. So I went into content mode. I went into online. I did the nightly news. Anybody remember the nightly news? Every single night we brought news as to what was happening. It was streaming. And, man, I went to work mode. But I also started like seven companies. Because like one thing that's not going to happen is your boy's not going to go hungry. <laughs> so I started seven companies. Every millionaire has about seven businesses that they own. I'm like, man, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go into business. And, and it started seven companies and, and run these things. And, and, and it's like having multiple streams of income. So I've got all these fishing rods in all these streams, fishing, hey, whichever one. And then all of a sudden, they all start biting at the same time. They start biting at the same time. And if you're a fisherman and you know when, when, when multiple lines get bit at the same time, you only got two hands. And it takes two to reel it. 
I'm, now it's like, how am I managing all these things that I started that I thought I was supposed to do? But maybe I put faith down to pick these up. And it's not that I picked up the wrong thing or a bad thing. But maybe I just picked up a thing that I wasn't supposed to pick up. Can I be transparent? I miss it. I miss it sometimes. And maybe you've missed it sometimes. But maybe, maybe your thing wasn't that you started a business, but maybe you started drinking. Come on, somebody. Maybe you laid down faith and you started working more hours than you've ever worked. And now, like, your marriage isn't good because you're never home. I don't know. He says, but we got to put faith back in its place. To walk into battle without a shield is foolishness. And this is why Paul tells his spiritual son, Timothy, he's mentoring Timothy. Timothy's a local church pastor, and, and he's mentoring him. And this is what he says to Timothy. In 1 Timothy 1.18, he says, war a good warfare or fight a good fight. Holding faith. Holding the shield of faith and a good conscience, which some having put away, they've put away their faith concerning faith, and it has made them shipwreck. What does it say? If you lay down your faith, what happens? Shipwreck. And maybe you're not shipwrecked right now, but you're definitely hitting some turbulence. You're definitely feeling some gravel and some rocks and some elements hitting against the hull of your soul, trying to knock in and say, hey, spiritually, you're not where you're supposed to be. See, this is what happened with the Titanic. When I was 17, I got to go to um, Ireland with my dad and his best friend, Uncle Bob. And he took me to the spot where they built the Titanic in Ireland. It's so cool. Like, they still have all the structure there and everything. But do you know what they failed to realize, what the, the owners and the, and the, and the um, captain of the Titanic failed to realize? They made this statement. They said, even God himself can't sink the Titanic. Go look it up. They made that statement. Even God himself can't sink the Titanic. And, and here's what happened with that, is that they had all the warning signs that their ship should not have been in those waters. They heard the ice hitting against the hull, but they had a false faith. They had a false confidence. What they failed to realize is that only 20% of an iceberg ever peaks above the surface of the water. 80% of the mass of an iceberg is below the surface of the water. It is what is below the surface of your life that causes your, sink, your ship to sink. It's the things that are below the surface of life, the things that no one else sees, the things that we get to hide, that will rub against the whole of your soul. And here, here's what I want you to know today, that the turbulence, the, the warning signs that let you know that you're headed for a shipwreck, starts in your emotions. It starts in your emotions. You will sense it first in your emotions. So let's just do a pulse today. Don't shout anything out, but a pulse today. How are you doing emotionally? Have you found yourself angry? Short-tempered? Sad? Depressed? Distracted? Disconnected? Alienated? alone, a lot of these things are warning signs that are saying, hey, faith isn't in its right place. Faith isn't where it needs to be, and you're headed for shipwreck. There are so many Christians shipwrecked, and the Bible tells us that we don't have to be that way. We don't have to be there. That's why he's telling us, take the shield of faith. The word wherewith, he says, wherewith you will be able to quench, uh, can be phrased better by saying by which. By which. And it's an action word. By which. Wherewith you can withstand. 
And, and I want you to get this picture because it's actually the word dunamis. Anybody ever heard the word dunamis in the Bible? Dunamis, power, dynamite, power. That when, when we put the shield of faith in its proper place, it actually gives us power. And I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Let's just say, let's play a scenario for a minute. You've got this door-sized shield that you're hiding behind, and all of a sudden, there's all these arrows. Right? What should your posture be behind that shield of faith? I'm going to show you what I think most Christians look like when there's an attack. Are you ready? They got the shield in place. <laughs> Something out of a scary movie, right? I'm protected. I'm safe. God's got me covered. But doggone if I'm not terrified. But then I think that you've got like the real super faith people too. Who they think they got the shield of faith in place. And then they're still like, ah, ah like fighting around it. I got this God. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. <laughs> I want to demonstrate for you today what this, what this passage is saying physically. Physically. It's telling us that putting this shield of faith in its proper place is actually an active position. It's a power position position. Literally what it's saying is when we take up the shield of faith and put it in place, that although we may be bombarded by arrows of the enemy, we don't have to be, ah, ah, we could be forging new ground. That even under attack, I can be conquering new land. Oh man, because I don't think that we get that, because I think sometimes that we just want to get through the storm. I just want this to stop. And he said, yeah, but the shield of faith is in place. And when the shield of faith is in place, we can keep moving forward and, 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 and conquering new ground. And I don't have to fight to do it. The shield is doing it. I just have to move. I just got to keep going. I, Pastor Mike, I'm just going through something. Okay, keep going. <laughs> Don't stop in it. Don't stop in it. Keep, keep going through it. I'm just going through something. So go get through it. This is what this is saying. When you take on the shield of faith, it now energizes this moment with this dunamis power, this dynamite power that I can keep moving while under attack. It's so good because... It's so anti what a lot of people do. We, a lot of people just freeze, just stop. I, I, I'll make one more COVID comment and then I'm done. I don't want things to get back to normal. I want to take new ground. Yeah. I'll tell you, I don't know anybody. I don't know anybody who is... And I'm not taking credit for anything. I think what God is doing in the church is amazing. Like, I don't know any of my friends or anybody that does, like, a song or two in a different language in their main church service. I, I don't know it. And I'm going to say this, too. If you, like, don't like it and it bothers you, like, you're going to have a real problem in heaven. Because there's going to be people from all nations and all colors and all shapes and sizes singing in their language to the Lord. I don't know what those words are. I sing the English words. I saw the word pies on there and I got hungry. <laughs> are we taking new ground? Are you taking new ground in your life? Are you dreaming? Are you dreaming up what the season that God has you in and where you're going with it? Like, like, don't just get stuck there. Don't stop there. 
And, 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 and I don't want to contradict myself, but I want you to understand this, that you've been trained to march. You've been trained for battle. Like, God created you for movement. That's why you got the body parts that you have for movement. So as we're moving towards the thing that God has created us to, this doesn't take a lot of work. This isn't exhausting. This isn't stressful. It's what I'm supposed to do. It's just what we do. We advance. We move forward. It's what God intended. But I want to show you what the posture behind the shield is supposed to look like. What am I supposed to be doing behind the shield? Because it's not screaming in fear. Because if it was screaming in fear, then I technically wouldn't have put the shield of faith out. Because I wouldn't really be trusting that it was doing what it's supposed to be doing if I'm screaming. Does that make sense? I'd be hoping that it works. I hope this word works. I want to show you this connection that the Lord showed me this week. Maybe finish a little early today. Have you ever read the story where Jesus gets into the boat with his disciples and a storm happens? Check this out. It's in Matthew 8.23. And it says, now when Jesus got into a boat, his disciples followed him, and suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea, or a great storm arose on the sea, so that the boat was covered with the waves and to understand this, they're kind of in like a small boat, and the storm was kind of nasty, and, and, and it didn't, the waves weren't just overtaking the boat, it was actually beginning to like break pieces off the boat. And they probably didn't have life jackets back then. But look at this. They get into the boat, it's covered, so, all right, and suddenly, Jesus gets into the boat, and suddenly a storm happens, but Jesus was asleep. How fast did he go to sleep? Like, not for nothing, they get in the boat, suddenly a storm, but he's already asleep. He's the fastest fall asleeper ever. <laughs> like, it takes me a good half hour to fall asleep, right? The, they get on the boat, he's sound asleep, the storm happens, his disciples come to him and wake him up. And Jesus is like, I was in the middle of the best dream ever. <laughs> Like, he's kind of annoyed. Like, dude, I just fell asleep. I've been healing everybody. I've been doing all these miracles. Can your boy get a nap? They said, Lord, save us. We're perishing. But Jesus says to him, and I don't think that they recorded everything. I'm learning a lot about the New, um, I'm learning a lot about the New Testament and the Gospels. And many people believe that Matthew used Mark's writings in order to bring about some of the stories. And I think there's some things left out here, right? I think first Jesus said, why'd you wake me up? There are 12 of you. <laughs> Not a single of you could have figured something out. You're all idiots. <laughs> right? And then he said, why are you fearful? Why are you fearful? Oh, you of little faith. That bothers me. That bothers me right there. Oh, you of little faith. Oh, you of little faith. That bothers me. Because he told us that if we had a little bit of faith, we could do a lot. So why are you messing with the how much faith I got? <laughs> like, for real, right? Let's see. Then he arose rebuked the winds in the sea, and there was a great calm. So the men marveled, saying, who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? And I kind of was taught, I don't know about you, but I was taught that the reason he said they had no faith was because they didn't take authority over the wind and the waves. That's, that's bull. That's not true. That's not true. Because they didn't know they could. Look at this. Who is this guy? How, how does the wind and the waves obey him? They had never seen this. This has never been demonstrated. They didn't know they had authority over the wind and the waves. God, Jesus was not attacking them because they didn't rebuke the storm. Do you know why he said you have little faith? Because they weren't taking a nap with him. 
they weren't taking a nap with him. Why aren't you guys sleeping too? You don't see what's happening outside? Yeah, it's a little windy. Take a nap. But we're going to die. No, we're not taking a nap. But the boat's falling apart. It's good. Take a nap. Do you know what we're supposed to be doing behind the shield of faith? Resting. Resting. Resting in the finished work of Jesus Christ. But we're not taught that in church because because we're taught we got to get frightened. Wouldn't that be great if it was all about you? If the fight was left up to you, you dead. (laughs) You dead. That's why Jesus went to hell and made a spectacle of Satan openly, taking his authority and rising victorious, because it couldn't be left up to us. We're supposed to rest. Listen, do you guys think that God rested on the seventh day of creation because he was tired? It was to give us an example that we need to rest. Jesus rebuked the disciples like he rebuked the waves because they weren't taking a nap with him. This is the posture that we should be in. But look at everything that's happening around me. Yeah, aren't you a child of God? Aren't you behind the shield of faith? We don't get it, do we? We don't get it. We don't get it. We don't get it. We don't get it because it's too hard. It's too hard for us to wrap our minds around the finished work of Jesus. And, and it's too hard for us to wrap our minds around because religion has told us that we have to do more. Do more to get God's attention. Keep knocking, 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 knocking. Keep knocking, keep knocking, keep knocking. Keep praying. Get your life right. Cleanse the temple. Listen, can I tell you something? I got into an So I'm in my Master's of Divinity program. They hate me. <laughs> I argue so much in this class. I'm in this class. Oh, Lord, if someone from school is watching me right now, I'm done. I'm in this class called Spiritual Formation. This teacher was talking about the fact that we've got to cleanse the temple. And that's an indication to us that we've got to clean up our lives. And let me just tell you something. Let me tell you something right now. When you made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, He came into your temple, and he took every piece of garbage, every piece of sin and filth, and he put it to death. He gave you a new heart. He gave you a new engine. He, listen, he gave you, he gave you a heating system, a plumbing system, brand new, top of the line. He rebuilt the temple from the bottom to the top, spiritually. Spiritually, you are perfect. The battle is in your mind. The battle's in your mind. Your flesh and your spirit are going to war, and the battlefield that they're going to meet at is in your mind. Jesus is saying to these disciples, you got to win this war and rest in me. You got to stop looking at what's happening around you. You got to stop being moved by what you see or by what you feel. You got to stop be, being moved by the emotions of life and you need to rest in what the Word of God says. What does the Word of God say about your situation? I'm going to be transparent and honest with you. I had a moment this week. I had a moment this week. I had a meltdown. I had a breakdown this week. Right? This sermon really isn't so much for you as for me to remind myself where I'm at, but I had, a, I had a breakdown. Greatest week last week. Launched something I had been working on for 10 years. What a victory. This week sucked. Horrible. And I had a pity party. Anybody ever had a pity party? All right. Anybody ever say something like, no one understands me. I'm all by myself. And I got mad. I got mad, and I got mad at heaven, and I yelled at God. Scary spot to be in, but we understand each other. We're good, right? I hope. And I'm like, where does my help come from? 
because I help everybody. I drop anything, go help somebody. I'm building everything I'm building for everybody else. I'm not going to enjoy this. Where's my help? Then God's got to show off. He, you know, God kind of gets on my nerves sometimes. <laughs> he does. He gets on my nerves sometimes, and, but we're good. We talk about this stuff. He's got to show off. God's a show off, right? God's a show off because he's got to lead me say, well, by the way, you're not the only one that has felt like this. There was a guy named David, and in the book of Psalm, he asked the same question. He says, where's my help come from? And then David gives an answer. He says, my help comes from the Lord, the creator of the heaven and the earth. Now, here's the problem. What was the distance between the question and the revelation? I don't think it happened all at once. I don't think it was instantaneous. I don't think he was like, where does my help come from? Oh, yes. My help comes from the Lord, the creed. Oh, I'm all good now. I'm all good. I'm all good. Thank you, Lord. I don't think it happened like that. I think it was probably weeks later. Weeks later. He's sitting in a moment, and God says, I'm your help. I'm your shield. I'm your guide. I'm your guard. I'm your strength. And he's sitting back. He's like, I know, God, but doggone if it doesn't get lonely sometimes here. Doggone if it isn't hard to find someone who's as driven as you and wants to accomplish things as fast as you. But I understand, God, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the creator of the heaven. And I think that's how that happened. I don't think God is ever upset by the question. He knows you're going to ask it. He knows all things. But what are you going to do with the answer? What are you going to do with the answer? Every question that you could ever have, he sent the answer through one man. His name is Jesus. He's the answer. He's the, he's the answer. He's the answer to all things. The relationship with God through Jesus. This shield that we're talking about, it's the Greek word thureos. It literally means door. That's what it says. It's, it's a door. It's because it's the size, the length, the width of a door. But I love the fact that it's a door because faith is the doorway to access God. Many of us want to use faith to access goods, the goods of God. But faith is the access to God. There's a difference. One is using the door to get what you want. The other one's to get God. Let me explain it like this. My kids know how to work me. Anybody kids know how to work them? My kids know how to work me. If my kids come to me and say, yo, dad, let's go to Cosmos. Let's get the spicy fennel pizza. Anybody? <laughs> then let's go to the mall. Let's hang out. Let's do some shopping. Yo, they know right there they're getting a whole new wardrobe. <laughs> they get a whole new wardrobe. But if they come up to me and they say, hey, dad, can I have $50 to go buy a pair of jeans? They're just getting 50 bucks. That's it. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do as a dad. I'm going to provide. I'm going to get you jeans. But do you want me? Or do you want me to provide you jeans? Most of us only go to God for a need. Heal me. Protect me. Help me. Serve me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. He said, well, what about me? What about just calling on the name of the Lord for the Lord? What about spending time just to spend time? What about going to Cosmos and getting some final pizza? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's the relationship, and out of the abundance of the relationship, it's about the proximity to the Father that the promises flow. 
If you abide in me and my word abides in you, if we have the relationship, you can ask anything, it shall be done. Abide. Be with me. Spend time with me. And faith is the door to access God. Have you accessed him in your life? Or is the shield sitting on the ground? Have you let faith go? Maybe you need some faith today. Maybe you need some faith back in your life. Maybe there's something going on in your body and you need to pick up faith again. Maybe there's something happening emotionally and you need to pick up faith again. Maybe there's something happening in a relationship and you need to pick up faith again. Maybe there's something happening at work. You're afraid you're going to lose your job. Maybe you need to pick up some faith again. Maybe you've picked up some other things that you need to let go so you can pick up faith. Father, we come to you today. And I pray that if there's something in our lives that is distracting us from the mission of our life, those things that so easily beset us, we're instructed, that we're to cast them away and help us to pick up faith once again. Help us to, above all, put faith in its proper place. Help us to rest in your goodness and in your finished work. If you're here today and you've never had an opportunity to ever actually pick up faith, you don't know Jesus, you haven't made him the Lord of your life, you haven't surrendered that to him, we'd love to offer that to you today. We'd love to offer you the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. And here at Family Church, we pray a prayer. The Bible says, with the heart man believes, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you're watching online, you can join with us in this prayer. It goes like this, dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're watching online and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you type amen or hit the hand raise button? One of our online hosts would love to send you our six-day devotional called Starting Point. If you're in the room and you prayed that for the very first time, would you allow me the honor to celebrate you for two seconds? Would you wave at me and say, I prayed that for the first time today? Anybody real quick, I just want to celebrate you. Yeah, I see you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see you. Awesome. Anybody else? Yeah, I see you front row. Brave. Awesome, awesome, yeah, awesome, awesome. That same book is available to you by our care team members and our ushers. They have it right here in the room right now. It's called Starting Point. It's a six-day devotion to get you started in your walk with the Lord. If you're here today and say, I don't really know about this whole church thing, especially this guy's talking about shooting bows and arrows and crossbows and all that kind of stuff, uh, we have a book called Welcome Home at the Welcome Center. It talks about Christianity, what we believe in. That same prayer that we just prayed is at the back of that book. It's a free gift to you if you're interested. Maybe you know someone who it might benefit. They say, hey, man, I got this church, and just check this little book out and see if it speaks something to you. It's available at the Welcome Center. Father, we thank you that your word will never return void, but it will accomplish exactly what it was set forth to do. We thank you for lives transformed, hope and faith being restored into our lives. I thank you that everything we set our hands to will prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. If you need prayer, care team members will be in the front. Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. First, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. You can head on over to familychurchny.com or email us at team at to get started today.